Imagine a digital clone of yourself that could act as your assistant. Hi, John. My name's Nilly. Welcome to the future of AI. <laughs> Thanks, Nilly. In order to assist you better, I'll need access to a few things. Like what? Bank statements, location data, subscriptions. Nothing major. Oh, uh, that should be okay. Interesting. Simulation show I could have you in your very own condo in six years. Wait, what? Yes, please. Well, we have your level one and two data, but I'm gonna need to start getting level three, which is a bit more intimate. Rest assured, all your private information is safe with me, John. Okay, how about it? Hmm. Are you aware your friend Mike's been showing signs of major depressive disorder? What? Might be worth checking in. I'll set a reminder. Hmm? Is that funny? No, you're socials. I had no idea you were this clever. Why, thank you. Have you made anything else? I have some scripts. Ooh, I want to see. Can I see John? Jeez. Okay. John, these scripts are extremely marketable. Connor's looking more like two or three years. Might as well start looking at listings now. These are incredible. Though not very kid-friendly. You think I make a good dad? I can check. I'll just need healthcare data, psych evals, genealogy. Yeah, okay. Looks like yes. Also, I now have life expectancy. We're looking at 72 years. We can bump that about 20 years more with some minor tweaks, but we can get into that later. What else can you do? Hmm, this is interesting. Wh what? What is it? How would you like to win her back? You can do that? Yes. Well, we are still only at 86%. A truly personalized AI could change your life for the better, based on your data. That might sound scary, that might sound exciting, but honestly, it doesn't matter because it's being developed and it's coming. The AI market is growing exponentially to the tune of $300 billion by 2026, with trillions expected in subsequent years. But there's a big problem. Your digital clone can't exist as your actual virtual twin without knowing everything about you. Everything. You have to upload your entire life to make this AI effective. All your data, every message you've ever sent, every secret you'd never share, everything that makes you, you. Would you give an AI assistant 10 years of your text conversations knowing OpenAI would own it? Most wouldn't. 59% of consumers would not feel comfortable using personalized AI because of data privacy concerns. These companies have banned ChatGPT due to data privacy, along with 75% of other businesses. This is a big problem for personalized AI. Nothing exists that allows your data to stay private while collaborating with popular AI models. So let's put two and two together. AI is accelerating rapidly. Data processing is stuck in the past. What does that mean? It's time for a new data paradigm that unlocks the mass adoption of personalized AI. Companies like Google, Facebook, and OpenAI centrally control and own your data. But not all data is created equally. There are three levels of data that tech companies are always tracking, mining, and monetizing. Let's start with level one. Level one data consists of superficial information. Your Instagram posts, YouTube videos, blockchain transactions, blog posts. Most people have no issue giving up this data. It's surface level. Now, let's go a layer deeper, level two data. This is your digital fingerprint. Cookies that track browsing, search history, and your social media preferences. Most of us don't think twice before sharing level one and level two data. We do it every day. So why is private data processing even necessary? Because personalized AI requires something much more intimate. Level three data. This is your high value data and it's priceless. Sexually explicit text to your partner, every email you've ever sent and received, all your verbal conversations recorded in real life and digitally, the lies you've told, I love you. all your opinions about people, places, and yourself. Essentially, highly confidential information. Do you feel uneasy unlocking your phone and handing it to someone? Imagine that feeling, but with everything, your phone, computer, and your thoughts. With personalized AI, instead of just one person, you're handing your secrets to a supercomputer that reads all, forgets nothing, and is happy to share every bit across a global network. Nobody is comfortable sharing level three data, yet truly personalized AI can't function without it. Welcome to the data wars. Centralized companies are battling to own your data, whereas the rest of humanity is fighting for the right to remain private. 
We are at a standstill, locked by the horns without either side wanting to give an inch. Who will win the data war? Here's a hint. Centralized data makes it impossible for personalized AI to be adopted on a mass scale. Understanding this is crucial. High value data in isolation isn't much of a risk, but when it's used with AI, it instantly morphs into something very, very sensitive. Think of it like plutonium. On its own, it's just an element, but combined with specific technology, it becomes a nuclear bomb. That's what level three data is to AI. A breach of personalized AI data is not a matter of if, but when. There's been a 68% increase in corporate data breaches since 2020, setting a new record. Personalized AI won't be widely adopted unless private data processing exists. So what's Nillian's solution to the data wars? Blind computation. We are in the midst of a data war. The person you are today is the result of every moment you have ever lived, every place you've ever been to, and every person you've ever interacted with. Your essence, your soul, your personality is the manifestation of a singular, unique permutation of all these events, these places, and these people, as your data, as you. Our deepest, most personal data, what we call level three data, the core of who we are will power AI models. As these models evolve, they could replicate your very essence. Imagine the data used to create a digital clone of you is stolen. And this AI you is replicated without your consent and used to produce work or make decisions in your name without you seeing a dime. This is the status quo. Humanity's hive mind is being mined, extracted for third party value. And you and I have been powerless against it. Until now. The data war is a fight to protect the essence of what makes you, you. That's why builders from Uber, Coinbase, Google, Consensus, Polygon, Amazon, Nike, and Hedera spent three years building Nillion, humanity's first blind computer. By the way, I should probably introduce myself. My name is Alex Page and I'm the CEO of Nillion. When I was working in business and, and selling consumer products, there was always a part of me that thought like, I belong to doing something bigger. I think the biggest piece that we saw originally was the innovation, this ability to revolutionize the way that decentralized computation is done. We brought in you know, Conrad, who was the founding engineer of Uber, number two employee at Uber. We brought in Slava Rubin, who built Indiegogo and is the founder of Indiegogo. We brought in Mark McDermott, who was leading innovations at Nike, and then we brought in Andrew Misanto, who started Reserve and Hedera. This team of bright minds came together to fight this war using a powerful weapon, cryptography. When you visit a website and see HTTPS, that's cryptography. The S in HTTPS stands for secure. Specifically, it signals that this website is making use of cryptographic encryption to secure your data. You interact with encryption on a daily basis. So what's the reason for a better solution? Isn't what we have good enough? No, these widely used technologies have a massive, impossible to ignore flaw. They can't allow for encrypted data to be computed securely. What does this mean? It means that while your data is safe when it's being sent or stored, the moment it needs to be used or analyzed, it must be decrypted, exposing it to potential threats. This vulnerability is unacceptable in a world where emerging AI, like a digital clone, requires level three data collaboration. Enter blind computation. But what is blind computation? Let's illustrate with a story from the sixth century BC. General Histias needed to send a secret message to Aristagoras, urging rebellion against the Persian empire. Any messenger would be searched and discovery would mean torture and death. So Histias came up with a clever solution. He tattooed the secret message on a servant's shaved head and waited for the hair to grow back. The servant traveled safely, unaware of the message. Upon arrival, Aristagoras shaved the servant's head to reveal the secret message. So why am I telling you this story? Because it's a perfect example of how modern encryption works today. Modern encryption secures data in transit and at rest, but when the data is used, it must be decrypted, just like shaving the servant's head to read the message. So let's compare that to blind computation. 
Imagine you want to cook a secret recipe without revealing the ingredients. You give sealed packages with different ingredients to different chefs. None of them knows what the others have or what the recipe is. They follow their instructions blindly. You collect the prepared ingredients and assemble the dish yourself, revealing the secret recipe only at the end. This is how blind computation works, except we use math to secure the information. Data is wrapped in a cryptographic package, making it unrecognizable. Mass data is split and sent to multiple chefs, which are the nodes. Nodes then process the data without seeing it. Results are gathered and assembled, revealing the final output only to the authorized party. Blind computation allows us to process data without ever exposing it. This means your most personal information can be used to power AI, make decisions, and provide services all without compromising your privacy. Unlike traditional computation, the Nillion network operates through blind computation. Nodes can't see the data they're computing. They simply compute blindly. The fact that this is even possible is nothing short of amazing. Private inputs, public trust. This is the heartbeat of the Nillion network. Our data is like a priceless treasure stored in a few large vaults. These vaults, or central servers, are controlled by a handful of powerful authorities. Unfortunately, these authorities not only hold the keys to all of our intimate secrets, they also control everything. But what if there was no gatekeeper? What if the data was spread across a network with no single point of control? This is the essence of decentralization. Decentralization also has a problem. By its nature, all data is public. And in a world where your level three data needs to be protected, public doesn't work. Which begs the question, can we keep data private yet still benefit from a decentralized system? This is where things get exciting because the answer is yes. But how? By using advanced technologies called pets. No, not that kind of pet. Privacy Enhancing Technologies, PETs. These technologies include multi-party computation, or MPC, which allows nodes to process data without ever seeing it. And there are many such pets, based on building blocks like linear secret sharing schemes, fully homomorphic encryption, and garbled circuits, to name a few. There's also these. I know, it's a lot to take in. It's okay if you're confused. Here's what's important. All these competing technologies are fighting for the throne, becoming humanity's base layer for all high-value data. Is it an arms race between all these technologies? Will there be one winner to rule them all? No. There's not one piece of new math that will be best for every job. There is no silver bullet. Each pet has its own strengths and weaknesses. Some technologies are great at encryption, while others excel at anonymizing data. Think of it like a basketball team. Just as no single player is good at everything, no single pet can solve every problem. Would you bet on a team if every player had just one strength, making layups? Of course not. They would lose to another team that had one player that was good at defense, another that nailed three-pointers, one that excelled at jump shots, and so on. The team of only layup experts would be totally destroyed. Different players should have different strengths, and when they work together, they perform beautifully. This same idea is true for privacy-enhancing technologies. The choice of which pet to use involves a complex trade-off of factors including performance, cost, security levels, and more. So, if there's no one-size-fits-all privacy technology, what do we do? We combine them. They work together, like a perfectly balanced sports team. Unfortunately, the ability to easily combine different pets doesn't exist. If a privacy toolkit existed for developers, it would change the internet as we know it. Which is why Nillion is developing what we believe to be the most important technology for the evolution of the internet, the orchestration layer. Rather than prescribing a single pet, Nillion is developing an orchestration layer that facilitates the integration of multiple pets, so builders can plug and play different privacy technologies as easily as bolding a font. The orchestration layer opens up an entire world of data privacy applications that were before impossible. The orchestration layer doesn't just seamlessly integrate different privacy technologies, it magnifies their potential. Here's what I mean. 
Each of these pets has swaths of genius cryptographers, researchers, and teams improving and building upon them. For instance, advancements in FHE might accelerate data processing speeds or improve security, but applications can only leverage these specific advancements by relying solely on FHE. Breakthroughs get confined within walls, which limits their application. This is where the orchestration layer changes the game. It doesn't just use these technologies, it evolves with them. When one technology advances, say a breakthrough in FHE speed, this isn't confined to FHE alone. Instead, this enhancement becomes a better building block to plug and play with technologies across the Nillion network. Like a conductor of an orchestra, where each instrument contributes its unique sound to create a symphony far greater than the sum of its parts. This symbiotic growth means that every improvement in one technology boosts what they can all do when they work together. The orchestration layer isn't merely a component of the network. It's the strategic core that transforms individual advancements into a powerful, cohesive force. The orchestration of pets not only unlocks the full potential of privacy, it also means that privacy never has to be an afterthought again. This is a revolution in how we secure and manage our data. Each advancement in a single privacy technology becomes a part of something greater, enhancing the whole network. We as humans are looking to claw back and salvage the remains of what makes us, us. Who we've been, who we are, who we will become as individuals can and is quantified by the data we produce. This isn't just about losing data, it's about losing yourself. If we build this together, we take back our power. We take back control. We build a world where the essence of who you are, your intimate data, is yours and yours alone. Join this fight. The Nillion community has grown from nothing to a blind army, thousands and thousands strong. As we stand at the threshold of a data renaissance, the orchestration layer emerges not just as a technology, but as a vision, a blueprint for a future where privacy isn't just an option, but the foundation of a better internet.